If your footage looks orangish or bluish and you don't know how to fix it, this episode's for you. Three, two, one. Here we go! Hi, and welcome to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for today's bonus filmmaking tip. So you've learned all the basics like lighting, framing shots, getting clean audio, etc. But when it comes down to really understanding your camera and how it deals with colors, you're still feeling left in the dark. Or orange or blue. Getting great footage starts with not only setting the right exposure before you hit record, but also doing a proper white balance. White balancing, if I had to explain it simply, is a process by which you tell your camera what's supposed to be white, and then the camera determines how the other colors should look based on that information. So why do you get different colored footage anyway? The answer is that every light source gives off a different color. Some light sources like candles or lamps give off a warm or orangish light, and then others like daylight can give off a cooler or bluish light. And when the light from the warm light source hits your subject, it makes the subject look orangish or yellow. And the light from the cool light sources make your subject look bluish. So photographers and cinematographers white balance to correct for this. Ideally, you want people to look like real people with natural skin tones. You don't want them to have blue faces like Smurfs or orange like, let's just say someone with an orange face. Also, if you have nice color balance footage to start out with, your color correction will be much easier when you bring your footage into the edit. And when you color grade after you color correct, you can give your footage the exact color treatment you want, and you can keep adjusting it. So some beginning filmmakers say, I'll just shoot it like it is and fix it in post. Well, this is problematic for a few reasons. The truth is, it'll never look as good as it would have if you shot it properly to begin with. You'll start to adjust your footage to correct for one issue, and it'll cause another one, and you'll keep going back and forth, and ultimately you'll have a poor result in the end. So if you white balance correctly in your camera before you shoot, you'll be better off. Period. All right, let's show you how to white balance your camera. I'm demonstrating on a Canon M50, but the procedure is similar for most cameras. So your camera, in fact, has a variety of settings to accommodate different light temperatures, as you can see by the little pictures in the menu. There's a daylight setting that will compensate color-wise if you're shooting outside, and there's the same with shade, clouds, tungsten light, fluorescence, etc. But it's not a good idea to rely on these. These settings might be okay if you had to snap a quick picture, but you wouldn't really want to rely on them when shooting video. These settings are not an exact science. Your camera is guessing what your lighting situation is and making a prediction about what you'll need based on what it thinks your color temperature is. Your camera also has an auto white balance setting, but not only is it inaccurate a lot of the time, if you're using auto white balance in an uncontrolled lighting environment, your colors will shift constantly throughout the shoot depending on how the light is changing. And this will render footage that may have different color casts from shot to shot because the camera is constantly guessing at which settings are best, and half the time it still ends up looking off. So I always suggest that filmmakers white balance manually, and then if the light shifts dramatically, white balance again. So here's how. First, get a solid white object to shoot. You can use something like a piece of white paper from your printer, or something that's a little heftier, like white cardboard. Just make sure it's pure white and it doesn't have dirt or other marks on it. I recommend sticking a white card in your camera bag so you have something readily available every time you're on a shoot. Next, you'll need to light your scene, or go to the exact spot where you'll be filming, right before you shoot, so the lighting is exactly how it will be for your scene. Then, you want to place your white card as close to the area where your subject's face will be in the scene. This is important because you want the light to hit the card in roughly the same way it'll hit your subject's face. Or, if you're shooting objects, place it right where your object will be. Hold the card still and zoom in on your camera so that the entire frame is filled with white. Make sure you're not tilting the card and making shadows, and move your fingers out of the shot. You should only see white in the frame. Then take a properly exposed picture. So you'll have a picture of nothing but white in your camera. Then make sure your camera's on the manual setting and hit menu. Find your white balance setting, which is in the red camera menu on the Canon M50. Select white balance and make sure it's on the custom setting, which is the little square with the two triangles below it. Hit set, 
Then go to the custom white balance menu below that and hit set. The camera will then bring up the picture of the white image that you just took and you should maybe get a message saying something like only compatible image displayed or something like that. Hit set and OK and then the camera will do its thing using your image to tell it what white is supposed to be. Then it'll take you back to the custom white balance menu. And that's it. Then just remember to repeat this process if your lighting conditions change during your shoot. All right, hopefully that gets you out of the blues and the oranges and into the real looking world. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out my other video on how to color correct in the edit. In it, I explain what each of the scopes do and the process that you should follow for color correction. I'll leave a link in the description. Of course, now that you know how to properly white balance, the color correction process should go a lot quicker. And also, if you have any other camera settings you'd like to see me cover, leave a comment in the comments section. Alrighty, let's do the tip. So for years, I carried a little half sheet of laminated white paper in my camera bag for my manual white balancing. And I'm not gonna lie, it worked just fine. But one day I decided to splurge and drop 20 bucks for this 12 inch impact collapsible white balance panel. And the truth is it made my manual white balancing life a lot easier. For one thing, the impact quick balance panel is big and you don't have to forever zoom or pick up the camera to move it closer to get the white to fill the frame. And secondly, it also has this great little focus image on the other side, which I use for setting my focus as well. And lastly, it folds up easily to a third of its size and it has a great little case to keep it clean. All in all, a great little investment for the price of four lattes. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, party people, that's about it. As always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.